Andromeda galaxy is 12 quintillion miles from the Earth. The irregular galaxy in Ursa Major is 38 quintillion miles from the Earth. The galaxy in Sculptor is 43 quintillion miles from the Earth. Perhaps the easiest way to grasp the vast distances between objects in space is to find out how long it takes light to reach us. The speed of light has been measured at 186,000 miles per second. At that rate, it would travel six trillion miles in one year. This distance, the distance light travels in one year, is called a light year. The Andromeda galaxy is 750,000 light years from the Earth. In other words, a flash of light occurring in this galaxy would take 750,000 years to reach us. Yet man, without leaving Earth, has measured the distance to this and other galaxies. Geometry provides one tool for making indirect measurements. We can sight an object whose distance we want to find from the two ends of a baseline whose length we know. The baseline, lines of sight, form a triangle. Knowing the length of one side of this triangle, we can find the length of the other sides and the distance to the object. The farther away an object is, the longer the baseline needed to accurately measure the object's distance. If we photograph a star in October, wait six months until the following April, when the Earth has completed half of its orbit, and take a second photograph, we will have photographed the star from two ends of an extremely long baseline. Astronomers can use this baseline to measure the distance to some stars. When the photographs taken at opposite ends of the Earth orbit baseline are compared, we notice that some stars appear to jump against their star background. Suppose we are observing this star. We wish to know how far away it is. In October, the star appears to be here on the background of very distant stars. Six months later, in April, the Earth has traveled to the other side of its orbit. Now, the star appears to be here. The difference between the direction to the place where the star seems to be now and the direction to the place where it seemed to be in October can be measured as an angle. The bigger this angle, the nearer the star. From the size of the angle, Astronomers can determine distances to nearby stars. But what about those background stars that are so far away that they do not show any parallax shift? Stars give off light. Can we use their light to determine their distance from the Earth? If all the stars were the same and gave off the same amount of light, the dimmer a star appeared, the farther away it would be. But stars have different real brightnesses, or luminosity. A bright-appearing star may be a very bright star a long way off, or a dim star close to us. A star's apparent brightness doesn't reveal how far away it is unless we know its luminosity, how much light it is really giving off. Can we find out how bright a star really is by studying its light? Starlight can be studied by passing it through a slit and a prism to produce a spectrum. 
Different stars produce different types of spectrums. Stars can be grouped by their spectrums. Knowing the distances to nearby stars and their apparent brightnesses, astronomers were able to figure out the luminosity and real brightness of these stars. When they also classified these nearby stars by their spectrums, they discovered that the nearby stars with similar spectrums had the same luminosity. Here was the key to finding the distances to stars. From a star's spectrum, you could find out what kind of star it was and how bright it really was. When a star's luminosity is known, we can determine its distance by measuring its apparent brightness. So by using geometry, the spectrum, and apparent brightness, astronomers learned a great deal about distances to stars and the size of the galaxy of which our solar system is a part. But not everything we see in the sky looks like a star. With the simple equipment of the time, early astronomers observed hazy patches of light and wondered about them. As more powerful telescopes were developed, they noticed more and more of these faint, hazy patches of light in their photographs. What were these? small nearby collections of dust and gas? Or were they large collections of stars so far away that the stars blurred together into one fuzzy object? The answer depended upon determining the distance to these faint fuzzy objects. Like many important scientific discoveries, the answer had to wait for the right equipment and the right man. The year was 1924, and the right equipment was the new, powerful 100-inch telescope at Mount Wilson Observatory. And the man. The man was Edwin Hubble, whose skill with a giant telescope enabled him to take photographs of some of these hazy objects. Photographs that revealed for the first time that some of these objects were in fact large collections of stars. Hubble studied these photographs comparing individual stars within the patches to other stars that he had studied. He knew the luminosity of this type of star and could measure the apparent brightness of the stars in the patches. The high luminosities of these stars and their apparent faintness led Hubble to believe that they must be a great distance away. In fact, far outside our own galaxy. Today we know that there are hundreds of millions, perhaps even a billion galaxies within the range of present day telescopes. The most distant galaxies astronomers now know about are more than five billion light years away. Light from these galaxies traveling at 186,000 miles per second and now reaching us started its journey many billions of years before the Earth was formed. 